There was a hospital established uh, in the 20th century called the Charlestown Hospital, Charles Towns Hospital, uh, and it was known as something that called the Belladonna Treatment for Alcoholism. And what happened, there was, a, there was some mysterious man who approached this person, Charles Towns, who was not a doctor, by the way, and approached him with a mysterious recipe of drugs, uh, that natural drugs that be given to people to cure addictions. And they said that it would be certain to make a lot of money. Uh, this mysterious person came, gave the instructions, and left without any trace. Uh, and it's very interesting because when this was tried, it was first tried on criminals, the underworld figures, criminals who were who were uh, overwhelmed with opium and other kind of uh, addictions, cocaine. And then the federal government approved it to be used on millions of people in China, who obviously had a lot of opium addicts. So it was used in mass on large parts of the population. Uh, this same gentleman, even though he wasn't a medical doctor, assisted in developing the early national drug laws that our country is, is still under. Now, what makes it really interesting is when you know what the Peladonna cure comprises. This particular cocktail of drugs that were given over time used Belladonna, which is also known as Deadly Nightshade, uh, shade, Henbane, which, which contains chemicals like hyoscine, uh, which is also known by scopolamine, which we've talked about, and also hyoscyamine, which is also in henbane and mandrake. Uh, all these chemicals, by the way, if you've noticed and heard of them before, the, these, these natural uh, herbs, uh, belladonna, nightshade, hidden bane, have all been used by witches for untold periods of time, for potions, uh, even in Shakespeare and things like that, you can hear some of these chemicals used. Folk medicine has used them, and I believe it's all the way back from the fallen angels who were taught that these particular root drugs. But this was given in a modern medical hospital facility to cure addictions like alcoholism. And one of the curiosities of this was that henbane, one of the drugs there, is known uh, when, you, when you take it, ingest it, for causing sensations of flight. You actually feel like you're flying, and there are some theories that this is how uh, the rumors got in the in the myths about uh, witches actually um, flying in, in you know, broomsticks and things like that was because they would take in their covens they would take this henbane, and they would actually take it in mass and uh, think that they were flying. Okay, so. This belladonna treatment, all of a sudden this man uh, initiates somebody, uh, money becomes available to put this hospital together. One of the early people who comes up to attempt this treatment is a gentleman by the name of Bill Wilson. Bill Wilson is a drunk at the time, but he will become the founder of Alcoholics Anonymous. Uh, he, just before this period of time, got to know some people called the, the Oxford Movement which was a Christian movement but has some very, very dark background to it as well, too. And that had a lot of effects on his work as well, too. But that's, that's for a whole other story, talking about the Oxford movement. But he goes to this hospital for this very bizarre treatment of giving these ancient uh, drugs. Uh, and during his hospital uh, uh, treatment, he says he had a mystical experience with God. And this was the experience that he talked about for the rest of his life. He said he had a sensation of flight, which is obviously from the henbane, uh, and this experience of being set on a mountaintop, and his exclamation was, if, if this is the God of the preachers, then I accept it, uh, or something to that effect. So he associated that with what he referred to as God or higher power to later state to what he experienced. Now, he, he had a very interesting life that many people don't know about. Um, he said that he... Um, he actually channeled the 12 steps uh, that he wrote about in his book from a 15th century monk, uh, from the resources I have. And this is because he maintained an interest in spiritual, spiritualism the rest of his life. Uh, but, but he says this came from this other intelligence uh, that provided this information. Uh, and in fact, his biographer said that he had something in his house called the spooky room at his home, where they would go to uh, seances or Ouija board uh, activity, and so they were definitely into that. Uh, he also got really involved in the consumption of LSD, uh, and he was part of a study group uh, back in the 50s, I guess 60s, 
uh, studying its use for assistance. Uh, people who assisted him were Aldous Huxley, a gentleman who has also a very sordid past from Brave New World and his plan to actually keep most of the world's population drugged on Soma. is talked about in his writing, his globalist writings that he had of an elite uh, running over a drug populace. Uh, people like Gerald Hurd, who I have since learned was one of the earliest prominent New Age teachers in America uh, in consciousness expansion. Even Claire Booth Lucci, who was uh, a, a congressional figure, female congressional figure, who's, whose husband operated the, the uh, Time magazine. So a very interesting group. But he mentioned in this consumption of LSD that the experience he had was, was basically identical to his religious experience he had in that hospital, which is what he considered his contact with God. Now, uh, coming here toward the end, I just want to share a little bit about what's coming, what we think is coming. Here is a quotation I'm going to give from one of the most prominent New Age uh, leaders, Barbara Marks Hubbard. She's a, a woman who actually narrowly missed uh, getting the vice president nomination for the Democratic ticket in 1984. Uh, very influential person, particularly in global circles, uh, and, and even with some evangelical figures, believe it or not. Uh, she had a message that she said she channeled from her spirit, and here's what the message she was given. It says, uh, this is her spirit guide speaking. It says, out of the full spectrum of human personality, one-fourth is electing to transcend. One-fourth is destructive and they are defective seeds. Now as we approach the quantum shift from the creature human to the co-creative human, the human who is the inventor of godlike power, the destructive one-fourth must be eliminated from the social body. Fortunately, you are not responsible for this act. We are. We are in charge of God's selection process for planet Earth. He selects, we destroy. We are the riders of the pale horse, death. So this this is a, a plan of uh, spiritual rumble that's planning in our future. Um, I spoke at a conference that was sponsored by the United Nations and World Council of Churches uh, that is a, a non-governmental organization, NGO, sponsored by this group, creating a new world religion called the Order of the Transfiguration. And the conference, international conference I spoke at in, in 2008 had the theme of reconnecting heaven and earth. And the theme, as they described it off the brochure, says that they will be discussing new sciences of consciousness and healing, which could potentially reconnect the worlds of spirit and space in the human psyche. And this is, again, what's being underwritten by the United Nations. And the cover of the brochure has a goddess who actually has the earth in one hand and has these stars in the other hand, uh, where she's reconnection, reconnecting the stars to earth itself as a type of liminal goddess. Now, a uh, couple more points. Uh, there's another interesting character, and this, this person goes back to the time of the Babylon working with Jack Parsons and L. Ron Hubbard. The, the female who they say that they conjured or conjured her appearance suddenly uh, from an earlier magical work than they did was a woman by the name of Marjorie Cameron. She assisted them in the Babylon working in 1946, January, with the goal of releasing the whore Babylon which they were planning to be the consort for Horus, or the Antichrist, which was the resurrected Osiris. Ironically, she referred, re referred to herself later, and she was very prominent after this event. She, she starred in movies by the occult filmmaker uh, Kenneth Anger. She was a main star of it. She was a head of occult circles the rest of her life. But she referred to herself as a female as the Wormwood Star. So she clearly saw a female personification in their internal teaching to a fem feminine personality known as Wormwood and as a star itself. Uh, just another quick comment uh, back in Acts, Acts chapter 19, the chaos at Ephesus. Uh, I mentioned this black awakening connection, and I think people can read that to see if there's anything to this mass invocation of demonic spirits in people, that there's sort of a... Uh, a, a initial run of it in Acts 19 when you see how the people were taken over and almost cost the life of Paul and his followers, uh, chased them into the arena, if I can remember right, or the amphitheater at the time. So um, in closing, I just want to say that I'm putting a further hypothesis here that, that this leads me to suspect that there are plans that are being prepared for a future mass evocation of this, this Wormwood God.